Welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You, sponsored by attorney Kelly Walling of Caperton Walling Law. This is the show where we learn about how to juggle our business life with peaceful parenting from moms that are doing just that. I'm your host, Kim Minch, a certified parent coach, the founder of Real Life Parent Guide, and author of the soon-to-be-released book, Becoming Me While Raising You, A Mother's Journey to Herself. Every day, I help moms who are striving to optimize their intuition and gain confidence in their parenting. As a mother of five, I've learned parenting is the greatest opportunity to grow ourselves up. On today's episode, I'd like to introduce you to Lori Williams. Lori is the owner and founder of Lori Williams Senior Services. She and her husband, Mark, have a son, Chris, who's 24, and a daughter, Abby, who's 18. Lori, welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yay. I actually um, know that you have a very interesting story about how you started your senior services. So would you share that with our listeners? Sure. So I had um, worked in senior living for several years and had kind of burned out a little bit. The company I was working for is working lots of hours and took some time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And during that time, people kept calling me asking for help with their moms and dads and um, placement. So I was just helping everyone. And then one day a friend said, what are you doing? (laughs) Why don't you just start your own business? And um, so I was actually at a happy hour and just announced it that, okay, now I'm in business. And then I thought afterwards, I'm like, okay, I really have to do this. <laughs> there you go. You've said it. You've now That's got to right. work, put the work behind it. That's awesome. So what do people come to you for specifically? What, like, what are the kinds of things that you help people with? So the main thing is we help them find um, senior housing. So that could be a senior apartment, independent living, assisted, memory care, and um, even like small residential care homes. So it's typically most times it's the adult children that come and they say, we don't know what to do. You know, maybe um, mom has had a fall and it's kind of, that's always the game changer or there's dementia, whatever it may be. And it's time to look for placement. So that's the main thing we do, but we also help them if they're trying to stay home and need some assistance at home or, um, you know, products that will help keep them safe at home, help with finding hospice or anything at all senior related, we help with that too. And I know I appreciated you when I reached out to say, you know, let's, what does the next step look like in our area? What's Mm -hmm. available to us? So I was surprised at the variety of things that you can help people find. Um, Tell me what are some of the challenges or obstacles that you've faced in building this business? Um, Well, really it was Honestly, I'm thankful that it was pretty easy because I had worked in senior living, so my my name was was known, and that's why I used my name in the business, kind of brand it myself. So that made it a little bit easier. Um, so really, just kind of figuring out my branding and logo, all of that stuff, what I wanted what I wanted my business to look like and the mission that I have for serving seniors. Um, here in the past year, I've been able to add. Uh, five other ladies on that work with me and you know we've just kind of figured out our niche what we want to do and and you know it's going great if I recall correctly there was a personal connection as to how you came to really loving seniors can you share about that a little bit yes so my grandmother and she lived with us most of the time growing up she went back and forth between our house and then my aunt's house but um I just, she always was part of our family. So I always loved, you know, having that experience, especially now, you know, reflecting back that it was such a great experience to have my grandmother live with us. But she um, got dementia as she got older and she didn't have a lot of financial resources. So I saw my mom and her sister just really struggle to figure out what the next step would be and saw them kind of go through, um, you know, a senior apartment to getting home care in to ultimately she was on hospice and I was with her when she passed away, holding her hand when she passed. So that just really, that was, you know, my kids were little still. And I thought, you know, as soon as my youngest is, you know, in kindergarten, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start figuring out senior living and working in a senior community. And that's what I did. And I just, I just, I love seniors. I don't know. That's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I, and I, I can so identify with that passion of finding your niche of Mm -hmm. where you really shine. Um, I do the same thing with, with parents, right? I, I want to know what, what really lights you up about working with individual families. I mean, my favorite thing about it is, I mean, I love, 
I love being able to take the, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety and stress that comes into play because people don't know, if you Google, it's overwhelming, all the different senior options. And, and so many people think that their only option is a nursing home. And that is, I mean, maybe in 1970 it was, but you know, now there are so many options. So I love it when, probably my favorite thing is when we've transitioned someone into senior living, we've, you know, gone through all the hard stuff and, and I help them if they need to downsize, sell a house, figure out how to get everything moved in. But I love it when I hear back from them and they say, oh my gosh, my mom is so happy or, you know, dad is making friends now and I, he's eating well. And when you're in the right either in the right community where your needs are being met or you're at home and bringing in services to meet those needs, we see a huge change because seniors, the biggest problems or the biggest issues are that they become lonely and isolated, which leads to all kinds of issues, or they just stop eating well and they're just snacking because they don't want to cook. And you know, once we take care of the nutrition and the socialization, they blossom. I can totally see in your eyes how it lights you up to yeah, do that. I, love and them. <laughs> I know um, I know one of the other things that really lights you up is your family. So I'd like to shift gears a little bit and talk about your husband and your two young adult children and mm -hmm. just kind of share with us about that. Sure. So yeah, they're my they're my everything. So my husband Mark and I've been married 31 years and um, we went through a seven year journey to become parents, went through infertility and all that. Um, stuff, which was not fun, but led us to the kids who were meant to be our kids. That's what I tell them all the time. So um, our kids are Chris, who he just turned 25, and he is from Ecuador. We adopted both kids. So he's from Ecuador, and then Abby is 18, and she's from Korea. Fantastic. Yeah. So tell me, I, I know it's not like having um, small children, right? I mean, mm -hmm. as mothers, we go through all these different hats that we wear over all the phases of our kids' development. But has it been difficult to kind of work with young adult kids and building your business? Has there been any challenge there? I think it's been, it hasn't been as much of a challenge because they were older. Um, I think because I always worked in senior living, both kids grew up around a lot of seniors and they both love seniors as well. And so they understand what I'm doing and what my mission and passion, they both worked in senior living also through high school. Um, so I think it's been not as challenging as if they were little and I was trying to balance, you know, um, you know, four or five year old kids with starting the business. So that's, that's been good. Um, my daughter has actually been a huge help because she's done like all my photography and, and you know, a lot of help with that because she's very artistic. So um, what I love about owning my own business though is that it is, I can have that work-life balance. So even though sometimes it does feel like I'm working all the time and sometimes my daughter will say, would you stop working? It's the weekend. <laughs> Um, I still have the balance where I can say, let's, like, we just went to Disney World. So I was able to take off and go and do that with them. That so. is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love that your kids share that same passion that you do and have mm -hmm. actually worked alongside you in that business. That's so, so amazing. Um, I want to know, we, we talk about different um, parenting tips on this show. We want to help moms and dads gain confidence in their parenting. I'd love to hear what you have to offer in terms of your best parenting tip. My best parenting tip is probably just keep communication open with your kids. And that was really important with, with our kids. I mean, being that they're adopted from other countries, they look different. I was always, you know, from the minute they could talk, I mean, we told their story, um, you know, how they came to be here and be adopted. And just always, just, I felt like it was really important to be open to anything they would come and ask me about. And it's, we've had many incredible conversations about race, about different issues, about adoption, about their birth parents. And I just always wanted them to feel comfortable to come and ask me anything, because it's not going to hurt my feelings if you come and tell me you want to know more about your birth mom or you want to meet your birth mom. I mean, just like 100%, you know, whatever. It's, it's your it's your journey. I mean, it has nothing to do with me if mm -hmm. you want to have, you know, find your birth parents, you know. So I feel like that was, that's the main tip is just always from the time they're little, have that really open communication because my kids still, to this day, they will come and tell me anything. Sometimes things I maybe don't want to know, but <laughs> they they tell me everything, which is <laughs> which is great. <laughs> I hear you. And I think that's, that is a mixed blessing, right? Because sometimes yes. they, they tell you things that like 
mom, I, mom really doesn't want to hear that or want to know that. However, I think open, open communication in general is absolutely the hallmark of creating strong, healthy relationships with our kids. And I want to piggyback on that. And we talked about before we went live here that um, we had recently moved. And my daughter, who is our only and our youngest, only daughter, um, she is 16. And she was not really happy about that move. So my tip and my thought is to really be able to hold space for our kids' big feelings. Um, this is probably the first time she's ever been really like eye rolly and slam the door and not talking to me kind of thing. And it actually has made me really appreciate I've always shared with parents and coaching how to not take things so personally that your mm -hmm. children say and do. And this has been a really good lesson for me to um, actually experience that myself and really helped force me to, you know, kind of take in what I'm preaching and use that, you know, to give her the space, to allow her to have the feelings that she's feeling. I think in time it's all going to work out, but in the meantime, it's up to me to be the calm in her storm, right? And I think mm -hmm. our kids take out their feelings most on us because we're the foundation. We're that we're going to love them no matter what. They know that. So I love that open communication yeah. and holding space for your kids' big feelings. Let's finish by talking about maybe some advice you'd want to give to a mom who is considering opening a business or perhaps um, switching careers or even maybe someone who's been home for many years with their kids and now they're looking to either start a business or go into a career. What's your best advice for that mom? My best advice is just, just do it. Don't overthink it. Don't think, okay, I have to do this, this, and this, and then I'll be ready. Just jump in and do it. And I mean, I know when I started my business, I didn't even think about all the logistics, like the, how to get an LLC. I mean, I had like a vague idea and I'm like, I have no idea how to do this, but you know what? I'm going to figure it out. So I think, I think people kind of get stuck sometimes trying to figure out all the details before they move forward. So just jump in. It, it'll work out. Yes. <laughs> just jump in. It'll yeah. all work out. Mm -hmm. Just take that next right step. That's what yeah. I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, Lori, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Becoming Me While Raising You. On behalf of Lori and myself, remember, mothers are the emotional barometers in their families. So taking care of you while you build your legacy is not a luxury. It's a necessity. My passion is to help moms create peaceful homes through happier, healthier relationships with their kids by working on themselves. If you're looking for help on your parenting journey, please reach out to me through my website, reallifeparentguide.com. Until next time, namaste.